boom, you have five minutes, what are you going to do about it? Life with food allergies is an epidemic. And IgE is the match that lights the fire behind allergy. Can anything be done to stop it? Now the fascinating research that could change everything. So it's just completely changed the game. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just been unbelievable. This is Techno, a show about innovations that can change lives. The science of fighting a wildfire. We're going to explore the intersection of hardware and humanity, and we're doing it in a unique way. <laughs> this is a show about science. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> by scientists. Techno investigates extreme food allergies. Hey guys, this episode gets personal. I'm here with Dr. Crystal Dilworth and Marita Davison and my EpiPen. And I have it for a very important reason, which is I'm allergic to peanuts and some other nuts too. But if I get too close to peanuts, one of you would have to grab this, take off the lid and uh, jab me in the thigh. I'm lucky I don't have any allergies, but Phil, I know this is something that you really have to organize your life around. I mean, even here at this coffee shop, you have to ask if anything is cooked with peanuts or peanut oil before you can order off the menu. Kind of a pain when it comes to ordering in places like this. But you know what's surprising, and I would say really alarming, is that the number of people like you, Phil, with food allergies has skyrocketed in the last few decades. And we went to find out why we're seeing a rise in food allergies and if we might find a cure. It was terrifying. His face basically swelled up like twice the normal size. When you've held your daughter in your arms, almost dying because of something as basic as milk. Every three minutes, a food allergy reaction sends someone to the emergency room. It's like navigating a minefield at all times. The statistics are alarming. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control report that from 1997 to 2011, the number of children with food allergies increased 50%. Over 15 million Americans suffer from food allergies at a cost of $25 billion each year. A hundred years ago, people did have food allergies, but it wasn't to the same epidemic proportions that we're suffering from now. Dr. Carrie Nadeau is an expert in adult and pediatric allergies. She's head of a special allergy research center at Stanford University. People are very much living with this disabling worry of having an accidental exposure. Allergic reactions occur when the body's immune system overreacts to certain proteins in food. While any food can trigger a reaction, about 90% are caused by the top eight, milk, eggs, peanuts, tree nuts, fish, shellfish, soy, and wheat. When the immune system launches a protective response, cells release antibodies known as IgE, or immunoglobin E. And IgE is the match that lights the fire behind allergy. Within six minutes, you can have this very serious allergic attack. This young lady uh, presented here after uh, ingesting some cashews. This is what anaphylaxis looks like. This little girl's mother gave Techno permission to use this video. Anything on her tummy? Yeah, tummy. Yep, and on her back, too. She's her... hot to the touch. So, Give, come and take your food now. Nine-year-old Give Greg is allergic to tree nuts and eggs. He's eating foods he couldn't eat before. How severe are the allergies? The first time we were exposed to it, we had no idea how dangerous this Yeah, was. That, that must be terrifying it as a mom. It was terrifying. How is it, Give? Hmm, is that good? Yeah. <laughs> Rana Gregg is Give's mother. Thank goodness he didn't have any breathing problems at that point. It was just the hives and the swelling. At Stanford, a treatment called oral immunotherapy was effectively desensitizing patients, one allergen at a time. 11-year-old Lauren is being treated for her nut allergies. So you get the choice of mixing it with applesauce, chocolate pudding, or vanilla pudding. Okay, um, chocolate. But doctors faced a new problem. A third of people who suffer from allergies are allergic to not just one, but multiple foods. 
The minute that you have a, a food allergy, you also have a higher rate and a chance of having other food allergies too. In 2009, the team at Stanford decided to tackle this problem head on. No one was actually looking at trying to treat people with multi-allergies. So just one up until that point. Exactly. If someone has milk, egg, wheat, cashew, peanut, let's treat them all at the same time, but very carefully at low doses. I had a lot of anxiety, mostly like going to school. At lunch, I had to sit like at my own table with all the kids with food allergies. Like I couldn't sit with my friends. A young girl named Tessa Grosso, who was allergic to nearly a dozen different foods, was one of the first to enroll in Stanford's multi-allergy study. So tell me what food you're eating now. Tessa's one of the toughest to treat patients. Let's focus on that and let's do it safely. Here, the breakthrough came in the form of an IgE-suppressing asthma drug called Zolaire. So we looked at that and we thought, could that protective cover help us increase the ability to get children and adults to food allergens to the same level that they'd like to eat them? According to the National Institutes of Health, about 50% of people with food allergies also have asthma. The link between the two? Symptoms that can trigger an attack on the lungs. Since FDA approval in 2003, Zolaire has proven effective in severe cases of asthma. That medicine in and of itself, it's engineered to be able to bind to this molecule IgE. If it's working against IgE, and we know that IgE is important in food allergy, what if we start giving it initially to people with food allergies, and then we start giving them the food that they're allergic to? That's going to make a huge difference for the patients, right? Yeah, and what normally would take four to five years to desensitize to, let's say, five allergens, could we compact that and have it happen over six to nine months? Without this treatment, it might have taken over a decade to desensitize Tessa of all her food allergies. Now tell me about your experience in the study. What was that like for you? Once I really started to eat the new foods, I could really feel like my life changing. At 13, Tessa can freely eat the foods she was allergic to. Do you feel that you're cured? Technically, I was desensitized to it. I just want to know, what's, what's the best part now that you've graduated? I can just go off on my own with my friends, not worry about it. The freedom that we have is unbelievable. Tessa isn't alone. According to Dr. Nadeau, out of 700 patients in the studies performed since 2003, all who have completed the trials have had positive results. Just like Geeve Gregg, once he was given Zolaire, his life mm -hmm. changed. This photo shows the difference in Geeve's skin test between February and December of 2015. What happened is, um, night and day. He went in one day with intervals of half an hour. They went 550, 150, 300, 625, and 1,250 milligram in, in one, one day. day. Wow, so it's just completely changed the game. Uh, not even close, yeah, yeah. Hi, Gabe, how are you? Good. How's the dose today? <laughs> Is it pretty good? That's so great. Geef's success created a lot of optimism. Others like Lauren are now part of the trial supported through the National Institutes of Health. So you're gonna get another Zola shot and then we're gonna introduce your foods. We used the multi-therapy that was customized to what the person was allergic to in addition to the Zolaire. And that combination really helped patients. And get all the scrapings out. Look at that nice and clean because it's stuck on the back too. I love food, but deciding where to eat can be a challenge. Hello, gentlemen. How are you today? Very good, thank you. Most of the time, the first thing I have to do is ask, does this contain peanuts? But not here, because the chef has a peanut allergy. So anything I order, it'll be flagged, taken care of back there? Absolutely. Gentlemen, how is everything? It is amazing. Brad Miller is owner and executive chef at Santa Monica's Oxen Sun Restaurant. 
so you as a chef, you take allergies pretty seriously. Yeah, I'm, I have an all-nut allergy. Okay. I'm allergic to all nuts. You know, I gotta say, for me, there's been times I've been at a restaurant when I ask the server if there's peanuts in there, Sometimes they just don't quite give off the confidence that they know in the kitchen it's being taken care of. Well, absolutely. It's one of those things where anytime you have uh, a customer, or even even for myself, is I don't want to cook in the same pan, I don't want to fry in the same oil. You really got to be sensitive to this because this could really not just ruin somebody's life; it could take somebody's life. They're very very serious allergies, especially nut allergies. For me, it's been a lifetime. Ever since I was a kid, peanuts were always something I avoided. But for this assignment, we needed to put real science behind my allergic reactions. So I made an appointment to get tested. So it's been about 20 years since my last allergy test. My guess is blood pressure is going to be a little high, a little nervous to find out the results. What brings you here today? Well, I'd like to find out more about my allergies. So this is something I've had all my life, and I just kind of want some answers. Dr. Maria Garcia Lloret is the director of allergy research at the UCLA Medical Center. Tell me, um, which was the worst reaction that you remember? I was in Ecuador, had some empanadas, and I didn't realize that they'd cooked. They peanut was one of the ingredients. Mm -hmm. When I puked, I swelled up everywhere, and I hadn't really swelled up before. The story that you give me, I'm 75% sure. Okay. That you have a peanut allergy. Okay. Okay. But it was time to find out for sure. If that's not bad enough. Okay, Phil, I'm going to do some allergy skin testing with you. All right. So that means that. being stuck with needles. So this is kind of amazing. There's hazelnut and chocolate, cinnamon, mustard, garlic. Needles containing nut extract. And I see number 50. Peanut. Yeah, that's, that's my that's uh, the potential culprit the, here. So I'm 15 minutes away from learning what items on this list I'm actually allergic to. Should we start the pricking? Okay, yes. Here is the peanut number 50 here. Here's the walnut. So it's been about five or ten minutes at this point. Definitely feels something itchy back there. So I have a feeling it's, it's probably gonna be that number 50. In all, I was tested for about 10 different things. So that was literally just peanut on my skin and it reacted like that. Exactly, that's peanut extract and you had quite a reaction that's there. That's crazy. The size of my reaction determines whether I get a confirmed diagnosis. The peanut is a 20. Whoa. Four. <laughs> that's big. <laughs> So what's my prognosis here? We confirmed what you suspected all along, that you have a peanut allergy. For what the skin test can say, all the rest are negative. So the test confirms I have a peanut allergy. But the problem is, this test isn't always reliable. According to a Journal of Pediatrics report, about 50 to 60% of the time, food allergies are misdiagnosed. But with cutting edge technology, researchers may have solved this problem. That's where Techno's Marita Davison picks up the story. Here in the Nadeau lab at Stanford University, researchers are developing a novel technique called a Diagnostic Allergy Test, or DAT, that can screen anyone, including newborns, for over 90 potential allergens, all from two drops of blood. So what makes the DAT test superior to the standard blood test? The test tells you what you're allergic to, how severe the allergy is, and whether or not you're allergic to other things. This breakthrough diagnostic allergy test uses a technique where blood cells are mixed with up to 96 known allergens like bee venom, animal dander, and various foods. This is the flow cytometry machine. This is called a Cytec. Experiments done on this machine show researchers how blood cells react to a specific allergen. Cells express proteins. You can take antibodies that recognize those proteins. They latch onto the cell surface, and those antibodies have little colors associated with them. You can actually detect those colors. When you want to know whether or not you're allergic to bee stings and whether or not that bee sting can cause anaphylaxis in you, that's what a perfect test is. There's another breakthrough. This DAT test can predict food allergies in newborns before the risk of an accidental exposure. Because up to now, antecedent to now, we have had to wait maybe till they're two years old for children to get the best diagnostics. And I thought it'd be nice to know with babies, because sometimes babies get milk allergies or egg allergies. Taking what's learned in the lab plays a critical role at the clinic. 
So we took the smallest possible dose, and then we divided it for however many allergens that person had, and then we built up from there. And that's what seems to have worked the best. We've got like two and a half bites. I'm good. Go ahead, eat. As of January 2016, Stanford's new diagnostic allergy test is still in the experimental phase, but early results show it can identify allergies with 95% accuracy as opposed to 65% for the standard IgE blood test. The sense something is happening even before the symptoms are visible. It's boom. You have five minutes, what are you going to do about it? Fifteen-year-old Kylie Kozar has a food allergy with symptoms so severe they trigger an internal attack. This is anaphylactic allergies. It's not just little food allergies anymore. It's not your grandma's food allergies. Yael Kozar is Kylie's mother. Kylie's first ER visit was when she was 18 months and three weeks old. And she almost died in my arms, rushing her into the hospital. Ever since then, Everything changed. Everything changed. Most of the times that I've reacted to peanuts, it has been pretty severe and scary. Kylie was diagnosed with an airborne anaphylaxis allergy to peanuts. There was constant problems. Like there would be like a little dot that would look like a rash or a hive. They're just different gut issues. This isn't a normal food allergy. If that peanut protein goes anywhere near her face, she can suffocate and die right there. At the age of seven, after an accidental exposure, Kylie landed in the hospital after having four anaphylactic reactions in three days. So it's not as simple as injecting an EpiPen with her. Today, Kylie doesn't leave the house without an arsenal of protection. We are here with three very important people. Focused on a treatment for Kylie, Yael started a podcast to bring awareness to the issue and meet experts in the field of food allergies. From Santa Monica, this is the Anaphylactic Allergy Podcast. We've been telling you about breakthrough treatments at Stanford that have been helping patients, but even those would be too dangerous for Kylie due to the severity of her reactions. Later through my advocacy efforts, I had found out about Dr. Lee. Dr. Shu Min Lee began treating Kylie for her food allergies in 2014. Based at New York's Mount Sinai Medical Center, she is a professor of allergy and immunology. With Dr. Lee's treatment and what Kylie's part of, it's already proven effective. Using traditional Chinese medicine, Dr. Lee created a therapy called Food Allergy Herbal Formula 2, clinically known as FAHF2. Studies show that herbal compounds in FAHF2 reduce IgE levels and combat symptoms of peanut-induced anaphylaxis. What is Kylie's daily regimen? What does she have to take? Twice a day, Kylie takes a certain number of pills. She has a digestive pill, she has a tea pill, and then she has uh, Mei Wang pills. All of these she takes twice a day. This plus a combination of other therapies. In China, these herbs called Wu Mei Wan are used to treat digestion and intestinal parasites. Her doses of the FAHF2 formula arrive like clockwork every month. From her home in California, Kylie connects monthly with Dr. Lee via Skype. During my visit, I was able to listen in on one of Kylie's Skype calls with Dr. Lee. Kylie, how's your stomach? My stomach's really good. So I don't have to like eliminate anything from my diet to see like what's triggering them. So yeah, it's great. FAHF2 is currently in advanced clinical trials, being tested as a new botanical drug under the complementary alternative medicine arm of the FDA. This approach is like effective to prevent reactions. Next step is that we'll continue to work hard, we we'll build up an even stronger um, tolerance. Over the span of this process for me, I've realized that, you know, things are changing and there are impacts that have been made. So I'm pretty confident that this is going to help. To eat without fear, a dream for anyone who suffers like Kylie. 
the more Techno investigated, the more we found hope. What are some of the things you want to do now that you can eat these things? Mm, eat scrambled eggs and eat oh. pancakes and oh, yeah. waffles. Okay, all right. Scientists still don't know why food allergies are on the rise, but whether it is high-tech Western-style medicine or alternative Eastern herbal treatments, the solutions seem to be coming into focus. And that can change lives. Just listen to the kids who know. I just hope that like everyone, every child or adult can get treatment and they don't have to worry about food allergies anymore. Well, have you had any close calls with your allergies? I mean, tons. It, it probably happens at least once or twice a year where I accidentally eat something with peanuts. And I have to be that person that almost every single time I order something, I have to say, does it have peanuts in it, peanut oil? peanut powder, anything. And sometimes there's been waiters that have told me that it's okay and it doesn't end up being okay. Uh, thankfully, I haven't had to use this guy yet much, but I learned a lot. I think it's so interesting because this Eastern medicine approach can really be seen as kind of going back to basics. I mean, even Western cultures you used to drink willow bark tea to get rid of your headaches, and now we know the active component is aspirin. And so it's really interesting to see things come full circle with this approach. So many of our medicines come from nature, and. I think this is just another great example of one that we can embrace. Do you think you'll use any of the Eastern medicine treatments? I mean, I would love to, I'd love to try it, see what works. Um, you know, I, I tried acupuncture in the past for allergies growing up, and, and I think uh, some of these things can work. But you know, Phil, this story was really personal for you. It was really driven home for me as well, because I have a newborn, I'm, I'm a new mom, and the idea of these food allergies, and in particular, meeting families that are in, whose children are impacted by food allergies, seeing how desperate they are, it shook me. You know, it really shook me to my core. You don't uh, want your boy to end up like me, is what you're saying. <laughs> it makes me pay attention in a completely different way now. You know, the World Health mm -hmm. Organization just came out with a recent report that said, expose your kids to solids, or as early as four months and to as many potential allergens. So you as a biologist, and especially with this knowledge, it's, is it interesting to watch your son develop and to expose him and just kind of know inside what the immune system is doing? It really is. I mean, being a parent and a biologist is like, it's, it's almost this clash of values for me, right? Because emotionally I'm really pulled by, you know, certain things that we're seeing and wanting to protect him and whatnot. But yeah, I mean, the fact that he, that we can have a certain degree of direction in, in how his immune system develops, I think is a really, I mean, it's a really powerful thing. Arming his biological arsenal. Yeah. Well, I gotta say, this was particularly enlightening. I learned a lot about myself, I learned a lot about my allergies, and thankfully, by the end of this, none of you had to use this on me. That's it for this episode. We'll catch you next time, right here on Techno. Dive deep into these stories and go behind the scenes at aljazeera.com slash techno. Follow our expert contributors on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Google+, and more.